In this next workshop, we will run hydraulic simulation. From the application screen, click the big button and select hydraulics. And create analysis. Optionally, instead of running simulation, you can simply load the result file with your results. In this dialog, you can change the duration of your simulation and the frequency which is used to store simulation results. In case of large models, with, with very long duration of the simulation, it might be wise to change the frequency from 1 to, to 10, which means that every 10 time step will be stored, uh, loaded and stored in the database. Alternatively, you can select Save Result File or Save Log File. If you do so, you will be able to download the log file or the result file from the application. Click Start Analysis whenever you are ready. The hydraulic simulation runs on the server. So even if you log out from your, from your browser, it will keep running there. And the next time you log in into the program, you will find your simulation results there. Now the simulation is completed and the results are automatically loaded into the table of contents. The results are organized in groups. We have water level items, Some of them are animated, which is indicated by the, the clock symbol here. And some of them are statistical, such as minimum, average, or maximum water levels. The animated layers are controlled by the animation control, where you can scroll in time to find the time step that you want to take a look at. And then we have water depth items and velocity items and discharge items. For instance, discharge displayed per pipe segment and animated. As you can see here, every pipeline is split into a number of sections where grid points are generated, and that is where the simulation results are computed. And then catchment results. And various other items. Flooding, pressures, flow rates, valve opening, Q versus Q manning, flood above ground level, etc. To look at the results, we can, we can view the results in the map, such as what we are doing now. We can also click the layer and then simply click the pipeline or the node from the map. And the actual results, for instance, 0.58 cubic meters per second at this specific time step will be displayed in the information window here. Now, for these items that are animated, we can create time series plots. To create a time series plot, it's very simple. Select the layer that you want to use, such as pipe discharge, and select the link. And then from the main menu, select time series and click plot. And the program will display time series of flow at that specific, <coughs> specific pipe segment. If you select another segment from the map and click plot, it will plot it into the same plot. And if you switch from discharge to, for instance, uh, water depth at nodes and select a main hole and click plot, it will display the water depth plot below the other one.
By clicking on these three dots, additional features are available, such as adding features, time series plots from another scenarios, which is very useful for model for results comparison. Or you can copy the data used in the plot into clipboard or save into CSV file. And then you would download it and open it up in Microsoft Excel, for instance. So these are time series plots. Another way of looking at the results is to create scatter plots. To create a scatter plot, we will define two variables which will be plotted against each other. For instance, water depth at this node versus discharge at the pipe segment. And by clicking plot, the program will display the scatter plot. So we have water depth on the x-axis and the discharge on the y-axis. And these dots here are from different or corresponding time steps, time levels. By clicking on the plus sign, we can add more couples into the same scatter plot. Another way of looking at the results is to develop profile plots. To create a profile plot, we need to define the path for the profile plot. And the path is defined by selecting manholes or nodes, or we can work directly with water levels, with result items at nodes. So let's select water levels at nodes and select the first node here. And then we can click one of the outlets, for instance, this one here or that one there and click plot. The program will connect them by the shortest path and the profile plot will be displayed. The profile plot contains the elevation of the pipeline, the invert levels of manholes and conduits and the surface elevation. And then in this case, we have one uh, vertical axis for elevations and also for water levels and another one for discharges. And we can use the animation control to run the animation and to see how, <coughs> how the flooding, how the wave is developed. And here we can simply scroll in time and take a look at the results. Again, the data from the profile plot can be copied into clipboard or save it to CSV file. And we can also click on the list and we can create a name for the profile plot. and save it and reuse it next time we work with the application. The same is valid for time series plots. We can also save them under different names and then simply select them, uh, select from them next time we use the program. And that is all for the results presentation. So to wrap it up, the results can be displayed in the map, in layers, statistical or animated, Results can be also picked from the map and display by pointing and clicking in the information window. We can create time series plots, scatter plots and profile plots.